Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here, practicing to take the GRE general test, 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 200, question number 8. These are quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison is what they are called, hence QC, number 8. Let's take a look at it. What does this have to say? What was it, number 7? Sorry, it was number 7. This is the one I'm about to do. The square root of 100 plus 36 versus 16. It's a very straightforward problem, it's a very simple problem, and yet it could give you a trouble in the sense that getting the question right in the exam is not enough. If you, if you did it in a very roundabout way, if you did it in a very tedious way, uh, by spending a lot of time on it and you got it right, well you got it right, great. But uh, it's always a good idea to understand what the exam is about. It's not about crunching numbers, it's not about what I would call, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, what's the expression I'm looking for? the raw power of, the, of, of, of crunching things, it's about thinking. How do, I, how do I go about doing this thing? Well, if I add up these two numbers, I get square root of 136. How much is square root of 136? If you were to ask me how much is, if you were to come to me and ask me how much is square root of 136, I will have a very simple answer for you. I will have a very simple answer for you. My answer simply would be, how the hell do I know? I do not go around memorizing square root of 136. Well, then if I do not know how much is square root of 136 exactly, how do I know whether it's a bit smaller or, or, or smaller or bigger than 16? And that is the point. The point here is not, the point here is not what this quantity is exactly, point is, are you able to tell very quickly whether this quantity, whatever it is, if it is more or less than 16. And for that, there are some basic squares that you must know by heart. Before you sit for the exam, I'm going to put them on the blackboard. If there is anything that you do not know by heart, memorize them. You must know them by heart. Okay, here we go. Take a, take a note of all of them. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and finally 10. You must, you must know these by heart. Continue then. 11. The square of 11 is 100, 121. Square of 12 144, 256, 256. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to square the 25, I'm not thinking straight. 17, you do not need to know. I, 13, this is 14, sorry. 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19. So this is your 11 squared, 12 squared, 13 squared, 14 squared, 15 squared, 16 squared, 17 squared you do not need to know. 18 squared you do not need to know, they do not happen very often. And then 20 squared is 400. Are they all correct? Are they all correct? Well, these I know are, very, uh, are, are right. How about these? Are they correct? How can you tell very quickly? Here's a quick trick with it. But it will not tell you for sure. What I'm about to tell you will not tell you for sure if something is correct, but it will tell you if something is not correct. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't have phrased my question the way I just did a second ago. Are they all correct? What I, what I meant to say is, 
Can you tell which one of these are not correct? We, we do not, we would not know what the right answer is, but we won't, we won't, we should be able to tell if something is not correct. For example, square, square of 11, square of 11, if you multiply 11 times 11, whatever, whatever the answer is, the unit that you should be 1 times 1, it should end in a 1. That doesn't end in a 1. So at least it has, it has, a, it has a shot in hell to be right. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is right, but it, it, it is not definitely wrong. Square of 12, the square of 12 should end in a 2 times 2, it should end in a 4. That is correct. What about this guy? The square of 13, the unit digit should be 3 times 3, it should end in a 9. It cannot end in an 8. I don't know what the right answer is. I don't know what the square of 13 is, but that is not right. It needs to be fixed. It is 169. It is 169. What else is wrong here? Can you spot? You see? The square of 16, the square of 16 should add, unit digit should be 6 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. It should end in a 6. This is not right. The square of 25 is unit digit should be 5 times 5, which is 25, which should end in a 5. It does it end in a 5, that means it has a chance of being right. I do not know if it's right, but it is, it, it is definitely not wrong. What about the square of 16? If you square the 16, 16 times 16, the unit digit is going to be 6 times 6 is 36, it should end in a 6. That does not end in a 6. There you go. You must know these by heart. And if you know this by heart, this question is very simple, very straightforward. I'm asked to compare square root of 136 over, uh, versus 16. Square, square, square root of 136, I do not know what it is, but I do know that whatever it is, it's less than 12. How do I know it's less than 12? Because square of 12 is 144. If the square of 12 is 144, then square root of 136, whatever it is, has to be less than 12. So I'm being asked to compare some quantity which is less than 12 versus 16, obviously the answer is B. That's what we're done. That's it, we're done. Let me look at the clock in the back, just one second. There we go. If you wish to hire me for personal private tutoring, or if you wish to uh, buy solution manuals to any of these problems, go to my website at www.prep.prep gre.com and send me an email. Alright, we'll talk. Thank, thank you.